Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash, and double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to all you I came out there who pushing this word with all truth and sincerity. And as well as tell you believers out there who believe in the gospel. And it's the brother Kwara Abad from the GMS Houston camp. And um it's a lot. Let me get these uh get my sword ready. But um sitting here, you know, doing a little meditating, and uh, the spirit had me stumble upon the Lord's prayer. And I'm gonna go ahead and read it. You know, which I'm gonna probably uh title the lesson somewhere around the verse I want to go into. Concerning the Lord's Prayer. And let me go ahead and get it in uh in Matthew 6 and look uh Lord Willingness lesson be out of fun. But let's read it real quick and then I'll kind of build upon the point I want to make. But this is uh Matthew 6, this the this the Lord Jehovah Shah speaking, right, to his disciples. Um, you know, giving them an example on how to pray. So it's Matthew 6 and 7. It says, But when ye pray, Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be ye not therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Before you ask him, before you ask him, it says, and after this manner, right? Verse 9, it says, after this manner, therefore pray ye. So it's, you know, saying, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And it's the point, verse 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You know, and that's the verse I want to build off. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You know, hey, and that made me instantly think of that Luke, oh, uh, not Luke. But uh, Revelation 21, you know, when it says uh, that the new Jerusalem came from heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. You know, when people hear that, though, they'll think about, uh, you know, perceive that's the physical kingdom, you know, falling out the heavens. As a matter of fact, let's get it. But again, touching on this, it says that kingdom come, that will be done. In earth, so when the kingdom come, when he let come down out the chariots, because <laughs> remember, Yahweh Shai said the kingdom don't come by observation, so it can't really be an actual kingdom. You see, we are the kingdom, man. The elect start with the elect, but the nation of Israel. That's why we call one of our names is Mount Zion. We we are the monument of the heavenly Father, the representation. Israel is supposed to be the representation of the heavenly Father on earth. You know, but when we come down off those chariots in our glorified body, the laws in us, perfect, new, right? That's new Jerusalem coming down. That's the kingdom coming, <laughs> right? And then once we come down, it says what? And thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And Yahweh Shai, starting with him, starting with him, as it says in uh, Isaiah 9, and around verse 6, about that son. And that child that is given, that, that, that son that was born, and he go establish the throne of David with judgment and justice in the earth. Well, we might have to get that. <laughs> we might have to get that, right? But look, he go set up all of him and 144,000, beginning with them, going to set up all in the earth. You know, going to get these kings out, they bunkers and, you know, binding their kings with chains. Gathering the nations, making them, as it said in Ezekiel 39, continual employment, you know, burning these dead bodies in the earth, cleaning up the earth, man, restoring the earth. And then what? Ultimately, they're going to be forced to keep our laws. That's going to be the new law in the earth, man. The law that your commandments of the heavenly father, so their body let coming down. That's their will being done in earth as it is in heaven, man. Perfection in order. <laughs> Beginning with Yahweh Shai and the 144,000, man, followed by the believers, putting in order in the earth. You know, so even in the Lord's Prayer, that's cool. Even in the Lord's Prayer, it's prophecy within that. <laughs> it's prophecy within the Lord's Prayer. But let's get this real quick in uh, Revelation 21. 
about uh, what we just mentioned, the elect coming down. So there's Revelation 21 and 1, and it's the uh, Apostle John, you know, as they say, John the Revelator, him getting visions on, visions on the Isle of Patmos. And it goes on to say, so there's him explaining what he's saying. He said, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, a new rulership, a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven, Esau is the end of the world. The first son, his heaven, it says, for the first heaven and the first earth <laughs> were passed away and there was no more sea, man. He, his rulership done with, as it said in Revelation 12. After that war in heaven, they prevailed not. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. No more rulership for the so-called white man. And look, when he fall, the whole statue, as it described in Daniel 2, will be destroyed. No more nations ruling with him. No more power at all. And it goes on to say, and I, John, so after that, he says, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the most high out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband man that's the elect because look <laughs> look we're gonna have to, once those missiles fall you know those missiles fall your how is coming he gonna beam up the elect now real quick because we're gonna come back to the revelation 21 you know but first i want to get how do we how we going and lord willing we're the number but we speaking into existence lord lord willing we're the number who actually go up there who he'll come up hither, you know, from the Lord, man. That's what we fighting for. But before we can come down, let's get how we going to go up. Let's get how we going to go up. You see? The Lord would have known be ever, you know, everywhere with the lesson. Just doing a little meditating. And like I said, skimmed across that uh Matthew 6. You know, thoughts started flowing, so. But let's get this verse in um, Matthew 24, right? How do you let gonna go up? Because look, what goes up must come down. So it's Matthew 24 and 29. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days. So Jacob's trouble. So it ain't gonna be fast because the Lord said right here, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. Yahweh Shai, the angels with the chariots, which the world know as UFOs, it says, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send a a sound so like and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other so when Yahweh shall come him and the angels they gonna gather together together the elect you see getting beamed up let me get a quick precept Isaiah 26 and 20 getting beamed up which just said is in uh, Revelation 11 right hearing that voice saying come up here to Revelation 18 you know, but it's Isaiah 26 and 20. It says, come my people. So it's that same voice. It says, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers. This us going up into the chariot right here, man. <laughs> Lord, look, we are that number. Because it just said, Yahweh shine his angels go come gather together the elect. And look, if so-called UFOs ain't real, then what the elect will get gathered into? Literal clouds? What's the glory in that? What's the fear and majesty and terror in that? <laughs> no, we talking about UFOs as the world call it, man. Real life chariots. You, we going to see them. It ain't going to be no more while we looking up in the sky, wondering wondering if it's a, a plane or a star. You know? No, they gonna be, we going to see the shape. We going to see the, the laser beams getting shot at people in the earth. And Lord willing, at the same time, we ascending up into heaven, man. But just like Yahweh Shai, the same that ascended, he he descended. He will come back down too. He coming back down too. Even the scripture says that this same Yahweh Shai in Acts 1, this same Yahweh Shai who y'all saw coming when the, the angels told the disciples, this same Yahweh Shai who y'all saw go into heaven, right? In that cloud, it says, uh, sell 
shell so in like manner come back the same way he went <laughs> come out of them come with them cherries man right but let me get to, let me uh, finish this real quick though Isaiah 26 and 20 it says come my people enter thou into thy chamber so in those chariots it says and shut thy doors about thee and hide thyself as it was for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed just like Noah he got in the ark. The door was sealed by the Lord, right? The door was sealed by the Lord, and he was up in there until the waters uh, went down. So ain't no telling how long we go be in the chariots. Cause look, once the elect go up enough, our bodies go be changed. Now we gonna be like the Most High. We are gonna be living on a Most High time, which is no time. One day to us gonna be a thousand years. So ain't no telling. Cause you look, it's still gonna be people on the earth. <laughs> you still gonna. America will be utterly destroyed. You know, Israel will be destroyed, but you got places, people on earth. Who else are we going to bind with chains and nobles of fetters of iron we're going to put in the captivity if everybody did? So the point is, these people on earth, while they elect in the heavens and the chariots getting crowned by Yahweh Shai at this time, watching America burn, these people just going to be looking up, just seeing chariots in the heavens, just sitting up. And again, who, know, who knows how long it's going to be? They will be on regular same times, you know, 60 second minutes, you know, looking up, ain't, ain't knowing what's about to happen when we coming back down. And then one day we just going to descend. <laughs> Who knows what the Lord got to talk to us about? Tell us. I'm talking about your high shot. You're going to see them in face to face, man. You know who knows the Lord, what the Lord got to tell us, talk to us about after he crowned us, that second address to that wedding ceremony. Hey, we're going to sip wine with the Lord because he said he's going to drink and knew it is in the kingdom. Probably go eat. <laughs> you know, the Lord might get the 144,000, separate them and tell them, look, this is the plan when we go down on earth. You, you going, you know, hey, <laughs> who knows, man? But eventually we going to come down. Now, since we got that we're going to be up there, let's go back to Revelation 21. The Lord willing is making sense, you know. But let's go back to Revelation 21 because this is what John seen coming down. He's seen the elect. And again, this is the kingdom coming and that 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 order and the will, the will of the Lord will be put in the earth by way of Yahweh Shai and, and the governing body, the house of David, man. So it says, uh, Revelation 21 and 2, it says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the most high out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Tell you, telling you that's the elect. Because who's the bride of Yahweh Shai? The elect, the believers. <laughs> the prophets and the believers. But it says holy city. But look, even in the scriptures in Isaiah, let me get there real quick because it said in the kingdom, these nations go refer to us as the city of the most high. Real quick, Isaiah 16 and 14. It says, the sons also of them that afflicted thee, talking about these heathens who oppressed us. It says, uh, and it's going into the kingdom. It says, uh, shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee. So these heathens, <laughs> these other nations go call us, the Israelites, it says, and they shall call thee the city of of Yahweh. So yes, a people could be referred to as a city, man. It says, and they shall call thee the city of Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel, man, a representation of the Heavenly Father. This is his people. You know, the, again, the law is going to be put into us. So this is what John seen coming down from heaven. The elect coming down from heaven. Remember, Yahweh Shai said, let's get that real quick. In Luke 17, and then we can get... uh. How the elect going to bring all in the earth, man? You know, we're going to teach these nations the laws. They're going to follow our laws. They're going to keep our high holy days. And ultimately, by them doing that, they're going to worship the heavenly father, Yahweh, and they're going to worship Yahweh Shai and worship his people. And his the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, his people, the Israelites, going to rule the earth forever. The will of the Lord, man. <laughs> Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Perfection. You know? Just as it was supposed to be, as it was as it was promised to Yahweh Shah, the Lord will come. Just as He said it is finished back then, the Lord go. He gonna make sure it's, it's done, right? But let's get this real quick on what He said about the kingdom. 
to more so prove that was a people coming down, which is like an unto the kingdom, because we are the kingdom, the Israelites, once we rule, you know, that it wasn't an actual building, you know. <laughs> There's a Luke 20, uh, Luke 17 and 20. It says, and when the and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, talking about Jehovah Shai, it says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of the Most High should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of the Most High cometh not with observation. You ain't going to see it coming. Just floating down. So proving that point with John seen. Now, you know, back then too, I would say this. The Lord gave actual things. They actually seen certain things, but it had a meaning to it as well. You know, but the meaning behind that is the kingdom came down by way of the Israelites, man. Because Yahweh Shai is saying right here, it ain't going to be a physical building. You ain't going to observe it with your eyes. But he goes on to say, he goes on to say, um, he answered them and said, the kingdom of the Most High come of not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of the Most High is within you. And that's that truth. <laughs> that's the truth, which ultimately allows the elect to get sealed. And ultimately allows the elect to get beamed up. What the scriptures say, um, by this gospel, which is able to save our souls. So again, once the elect come down, that's that's thy kingdom come. That's thy kingdom, <laughs> thy kingdom come. The rulership of the Lord, man. Thy kingdom come. And what it says next in uh, Matthew? What's the rest of that? Let's get it. It's Matthew 6. And uh here it is. Matthew 6 and 10, thy kingdom come. And we got that. When the elect and Yahweh shine the elect, when they come down in the earth, it says, in earth. <laughs> Hold on, I'm jumping a gun. It says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So once the elect come down, now it's time for the Lord's will to be done. You know, let's get this in Daniel. This Daniel 7. You know? It's Daniel 7, and I just get on my phone. I be trying to, I be in my sword. I like swinging that sword, but let me get in the phone real quick because I'm trying to do it one hand. But this Daniel 7, I'm going to get straight to the point, to the time period we in because when you go into it, Daniel had, you know, those uh, visions of the beast, you know, the rulerships that was all the way into the time of the Israelites' rulership, you know, the rulership of Yahweh Shai. Which, by default, that's the Israelites' kingdom as well. That's why the disciples asked them in Acts 1 and 6. They said, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel, man? But let's jump down straight to the point. This is the time period we in, right? Which is going into America, that little horn that arose. But verse 25, it says, And he shall speak, speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, most high and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand talking about Esau and they shall be given into his hand until a time and time and then dividing the times which we still in that time it says but right it's always that but it says but the judgment shall sit but the Lord the Lord's prayer shall stand it says but the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion. Who's the day? Who's the day? Let's jump up a few verses. I'm going to go back to that. This Daniel 7 and 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever. That's the day. That's the Israelites, the saints. So going back down, the day, the Israelites, starting with Jehovah Shah, we're going to take away these Edomites and all these other nations' rulership. It says, but the judgment shall sit, verse 26, and they, the Israelites, shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And what's the end game? It says, and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. Guess what? That's in earth. That's a part of the prayer. In earth. Thy kingdom come, thou, thou will be done in earth. So it says, and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And check this out. And all dominions, all other nations, shall serve and obey him. 
They're going to follow our ways. They're going to follow our laws. That's the law will being done in the earth. That's the ending of that part, that verse in the prayer. Thy kingdom come. That's the elect coming down from the heavens. Right? Thy will be done. You see? Ultimately, Israel, Yahweh Shai, Israelites ruling and all the other nations following our ways. Uh, worshiping our power first and foremost and our Lord and following our ways, man. And keeping our, uh, you know, high holy days. Just like they got our people in captivity. We got to, you know, not no more, but... You know, how they still got some of our people keeping Christmas and, and Thanksgiving. Well, look, they're going to keep our Passover. <laughs> Just like Thanksgiving, they got our people celebrating that. And you celebrate your own downfall, your own people. So, right, and for the Passover, they're going to have to celebrate their downfall. <laughs> Why are you feel me? So, it says, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all domains shall serve and obey. And that's all the being put into the earth, you know. That's auto being put into the earth. This uh matter of fact, this is how auto will be put into the earth. This Psalms. Psalms 122, and I'm gonna start at three. It says Jerusalem, and it's going to tell us in the kingdom. It says Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together, whether the tribes go up, the tribes of Yahweh, unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of Yahweh. It says, for there, so in the kingdom, once Israel be established in the earth, it says, for there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David, man. And that's what Peter was told by Yahweh Shai that they was going to receive, which Peter asked, right? You know, being that rock of the church. But the, the 144,000, although all Israel men go sit on thrones, we all will be kings and priests. But the beginning of that, the heads... It's going to be the 144,000, the thrones of judgment, which is the thrones of the house of David, man. And it's all going to be led by Yahweh Shah. Let's get that in Isaiah real quick. And then I get Isaiah 2. You know, just to go into how these heathens, they're going to have to come up to us and we're going to have to teach them our ways. That's the thrones of judgment. We're going to have to judge them, teach them what, as what? Priests, ministers, tell them what's right and what's wrong. That's going to be our job. That's how the Lord will will be put into the earth. For all people to obey him and obey his son, man. Right? Obey his people and follow our ways. That's what it's going to be. And, and true judgment and, and justice in the earth. And that's going to be established by where Yahweh shine and the elect. First and foremost. But all Israel ultimately. You know, but let's get that Isaiah. About the thrones of... Uh, right? So this is uh, Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Talking about Jehovah Shai says, And the government, which is the prophets, shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Power, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And here it is. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end of everlasting kingdom. It says, And upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom, and the throne of David, all 12 tribes were together. The throne of David, he had all heathens in subjection, man. <laughs> right? Peace. Following the ways of the Lord. That's going to, it's going to be the same thing, but this time, Yahweh Shai will be sitting on David's throne. He going to be the king. King David will be the king under the Lord, man. But it says, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to what? To order it and to establish it. With judgment and with justice from henceforth, even from ever. How he go establish? First, he coming with judgment. Just even like Solomon. Before Solomon sat down and had a peaceful kingdom, it was a couple people King Solomon had to kill first, man. <laughs> King Solomon put people in fear first before he was no known for peace, man. King David gave King Solomon a little hit list to go certain people. But he established it even back then with judgment and just before, justice before it was peace. He going to do it again. And he going to put by way of him ordering that and establish, establishing his kingdom with judgment and justice. That's going to be that, that time period of that long thousand years of hardcore captivity for these heathens. And then even after that, they're going to keep our ways and continue forever to get judged by our laws. That's order and the most high will being in the earth. 
once his kingdom come <laughs> down in the earth, man. And it says the zeal of the Lord will perform this, so it's going to happen. You know, it's going to happen. Let's get that Isaiah 2. I've been wanting to get it, but I'm going to get it now. It's Isaiah 2. It says, uh, in 2, it says, it shall come to pass in the last days. And it's a prophecy for now, because it goes on to say that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. Now, in the scriptures, mountains could be a literal mountain or could be symbolic for nations and kingdoms, right? And right here is symbolic for other uh, nations, kingdoms, man. But it says that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the, of the mountains. The Israelites, we going to rule over all other nations. Even, hey, even today, what they call it uh, when these different nations meet together, a G20 summit. A summit is a top of a mountain. <laughs> Look it up, a, a mountaintop. So in the end times, it says that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. They will come be taught our ways, man. It says, and many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh to the house of the power of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. Now, as the heavenly father literally going to be hands on, you know, <laughs> off his throne, because we're going to be on earth establishing stuff in earth. Off his throne teaching, he doesn't know how he's going to do that. By way of first year, I was shy, right? Uh, the 144,000 and the rest of the kings and the priests of the nation of Israel, man. We're going to be teaching these heathens how to live. We the ministers of the Lord. We're going to be doing that on earth. You know, it says he will teach us of his ways. Because why? We're going to be the representation of the most on earth. Just like Yahweh Shai was. But the scripture says we shall be like him. The scripture says uh, also in Zechariah, the house of David, going to be like the most high and the angel of the Lord before them. So we will be the ones teaching these heathens how to live. It says, and he will, hey, that's the kingdom coming on earth to, <laughs> for the Lord will to be done. It says, and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. As the heathen saying this, it says, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Man, and he shall judge among the nations and he shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, and nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of Yahweh, man. And that's ultimately the end goal for all nations to worship our power. You know, and that's what Yahweh shall come and bring in earth. Let's end it off on this, Acts, Acts 3. Because when Yahweh shall come, that's going to be that refreshing that the earth need. You know, this Acts uh, 3. And uh, 8 and 19, it says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he, see, refreshed. This earth need to be refreshed. Kind of, it says, And he shall send Yahweh Mashiach, which was before preached unto you, whom the heavens must receive, until the times of restitution of all things, man. So when Yahweh Shai come, he come and restore all things, bring things back to the order as it was in the beginning. And that's, again, the end goal uh, of what we talking about, for the will of the Lord to be done on earth. And again, that's going to happen when the kingdom come down, <laughs> when that new Jerusalem come down out the chariots. That's when that's going to happen, man. It says, which the Most High have spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So the heavens, Yahweh Shah will be in the heavens on the right hand side of the Most High until the Most High will send him down to restore all things. And when you go into the blue letter on that word restitution, which I, you know, I ain't gonna go into it, but you can you know, go into it. But that restitution, it says to bring back to the perfect state before the fall. They ain't talking about just, you know, any... No, that's talking about the fall before Adam. In other words, when we was perfect, man. Yahweh Shah going to bring us back to that even even greater, though. But with that, you know, Lord willing, this lesson was out of fun. I want to give all praise on and glory unto Yahweh. Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim Rachakwadash. And with that, Shalom.